Right. Welcome to the Eight in the Box podcast. Today is Wednesday, March 30th. We've made it to the Final Four, and we are here to talk some basketball, maybe even a little baseball as time allows, because opening day is a week away. And, um, you know, we're here to do that. Uh, the Cash Considerations production, uh, eight in the box. My name is Dave Sharapan. I am at Sports BK Consig for Sportsbook Conciliary on the Twitter. And with me, the point guard, the guy who's going to take us home to the to cut down the nets. We got to get two games on Saturday. Somehow we're going to figure out what that is going to mean for the game on Monday, and then. We start talking about baseball and everything else that's going on. He is Brad Howe. You find him on the Twitter at Brad Howe07. B Howe, what are you wearing today? What is up? Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever people may be listening to the program. It's good to see you again. Welcome back. And what I'm wearing, thanks for asking, Dave. Here, let's get a let's get a camera shot there. Oh, man, oh, oh can you see what that is? Is you that? see that, that that nice little St. Peter's Peacocks logo? What in the world? How did you Saint, get that? Well, we have to give a shout out to one of our listeners, Phil, located in West Virginia, where I'm located, the owner mm-hmm. of Burdett Camping Center. By the way, if you need an RV, if you need an RV, you call my guy Phil at Burdett Camping Center. Warranty forever, Dave. If we hop forever? in an RV and I drive out to you, it's a warranty forever. It's the greatest deal going. Wow. Right. Warranty forever. Phil. So Phil Phil hooked you up? Phil hooked us up. Yes. Wow. St. Peter's Saint representing. Peter's. Unfortunately. They want, they want, Phil listens to the show. He's a loyal listener. Mm. St. Peter's got him got him a few extra bucks. He slides over some merch. We that's, like it. Dude. That's Go St. Oh. Peter's. So go, go Phil. I mean, forget St. Peter's. Let's go. We need Phil. We got to find a couple more winners. Let's go. <laughs> um, well, that's great. That's good. Um, I don't know if I'm an RV guy, but I could be persuaded. I just don't want to do the driving. I just like I'll ride passenger. I'll talk to you the whole time. I don't if I don't have to drive, I'm good with that. Um, also, with a he saw the peacocks in person. Our producer and, and, and kind of behind the scenes co-host here to show Dan Alexander at Newbie Talks on the Twitter. Newbie, you saw the peacocks in person. What did you do to those peacocks though? Hey, you can't blame me. I bet UNC all the way. I was hoping for the Hell new yeah. mush. I, I I gave out the info <laughs> on Twitter, and I wasn't even strong enough for what the Tar Heels were bringing. Man, do they look strong heading into the rematch <sighs> against Coach K. Going to be the highest-rated game, I think, in a long time that's going to be played on Saturday. He right. He right about that. Uh, man, that was, uh, it was a fun ride for the St. Peter's Peacocks. I was out walking in the park with little consig and we ran into some peacocks those things are fast i didn't realize how fast they were uh, i don't want to mess with it but it looked like it could jump too so we kind of kept a little bit of a distance but i think it would beat me in a foot race pretty pretty bad uh, and i still got little quick speed shuttle runs things like that all right enough about my speed B how take it away um i'm, I'm assuming we're going to go in chronological order of the games yeah, we'll, on saturday we'll go, yeah we'll go villanova kansas first but before we do let's take a look back because i think this ties in to these two games I, I thought the real trend coming out of sweet 16 and elite eight how about the unders yeah you, you like you oh. like under, i mean my god 11 what? and one unders first half unders 11 and one i wrote a few of those but not nearly enough that was incredible it, it I, a virtual lock i mean the final score of the Villanova game was 50 to 44. That's 94 points. I joked, I saw a guy that I worked with before on Sunday. I said, I'm glad I'm out of the game. He said, what do you mean? I said, how do you make totals for these games? 94 points. I mean, how low can you go? It was 128. First half unders. <laughs> that, was a, that was a thing that people were talking about in the first round, right? Mm-hmm. This round, I think every one of them came in. Um, eleven and it was eleven and one, wasn't it? 11, 11, eleven and one on the first half unders and the full game unders. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was amazing. Well, that, Does that, that trend ties, continue. Yeah, I think that's the question because I think some of this depends on who you like in this first game, Villanova, Kansas, 
because you talk about two contrasting styles. Kansas is going to want to get up and go. They want to get Brown and Abaji in transition. Villanova, the opposite, 345 out of 358 teams when it comes to tempo. So Villanova is going to want to go slow. And then the story with Villanova is the injury situation. Justin Moore out, unfortunately, popped that Achilles late in that game. That's, that's a shame at any point. But with one minute to go in that game, Justin Moore pops an Achilles. And this is a team that only played six, Dave. Now they're down to five, and they lose one of their best players, their Ooh. best defender in Justin Moore. I know the number's baked in a little bit because I think this game's a one if Moore is healthy. So I know the number's already there. How much do we factor that in? I mean, a, a, a thin bench just got really thin, might be non-existent for Villanova. So let's start there before we get onto the court. How much does that factor in? Do you worry about it because the number's baked in? How do you approach that? from a big injury standpoint for the Wildcats? How do I approach it? I ain't got no Kansas stuff, but I got Kansas City stuff. You see my Royals jersey and my <clears throat> Kansas City Monarchs. Is that the Monarchs? Is that yeah, that's okay. the Monarchs yeah. throwback yeah. hat. Thank you to Rings and Crowns, um, an unbelievable company that Lids has kind of either took over or helped out, but they had a collection that it kind of picked up. Um, I mean, this is easy, right? You just play Kansas and move on. Villanova has no chance. That's what everybody's kind of talking about i don't know this could be a see the thing is is every time you do this and you count a team out the spreads four like this this is more this is the odds makers telling you hold on hold on hold on <laughs> this is not so easy this is villanova this is a senior bunch of guys a great basketball coach and jay wright four it's now four and a half all right uh pretty much yeah unanimous there's not any place that i'm looking at it's not four and a half um i think you gotta hesitate though in laying it if you, i mean if you're gonna play it you probably should play it now i think it goes back to it goes to five but i don't think it lasts i think there's a faction of people bad guys included that will take Villanova plus five because the score is going to be so low. Not only when you take five, could Villanova win the game, but they can cover the spread. Um, Kansas didn't cover against Providence, right? Um, the numbers have we, been, we were on that. We like that. Remember we right? like Providence plus seven and a half Kansas to win. That was a good one. We middled that. We got yeah. Kansas to win and seven and a half for Providence. This is what I'm thinking for this game right now as well. I, I'm not ready to – are you ready to just buy that whole thing, the, the, the narrative we just discussed, and say Kansas is going to the final game? They may not cover, but Kansas is going to the final game because this might be one of those Kansas money lines, if you like them, or Villanova plus the points. In game, it's got to be six plays because I think there will be a time where Villanova will be leading this game, so you'll be able to take Kansas at almost a nothing number. And there will be a, probably a time where, you know, Kansas is pushing a double-digit lead. You may be able to have, grab Villanova plus eight and a half. But are you ready to just dismiss it? Are you – I mean, you got Kansas no, in the final game? I, I, I do. I like Kansas to win the game. And you know me, I've been on Kansas now for how many weeks? I, I like yep. them. I've watched them up close covering the Big 12. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I, I really like them, and I think they're playing really well. Here's a couple of things. I No, I don't want to dismiss Villanova just yet because I'm afraid that narrative is so far the other way. All they don't have more, Villanova has no chance, and I, I'm not comfortable there. Villanova's excellent. They've got a great coach in Jay Wright. But I do think a couple of things on the floor matter here. Number one, transition is what we talked about. So, so Kansas is going to want to get up and down and go. But Villanova's very good, six nationally in transition defense. So Teams don't score real easily on Villanova. They get back with that slow pace offensively. They get back on defense. So let's keep an eye on that. A couple other things, though, from a Kansas perspective. <clears throat> Their half-court defense continues to get better. If you talk to the Kansas folks earlier in the season, and Bill Self himself talked about this Kansas team wasn't Bill good Self defensively. Himself? Bill you... Self himself. Yeah, do you like Bill that? Self himself. Okay. Bill Self himself talking about his team. They, they didn't like how they were playing defensively. Then over the last seven or eight games, this Kansas defense has really started to pick it up and yes, has played have. really well. Let me give you a number. Kansas held just five opponents 
below 40% as an effective field goal percentage if from November through February. Percentage. Yeah, so what that means, that factors in three-pointers are worth more than two. It's just not your straight shots made. Okay. Effective field goal percentage takes into the value of the shots you make. Okay. So they only held five opponents below 40% from November through February. That backs up what, what Bill Self and some Kansas followers were saying. They're not playing as good a defense as they need to. Okay. But since mid-March, Kansas has held four of its seven opponents below that 40% mark. That defense has really picked up. So if you now have a Villanova team without one of its better players in Justin Moore, one of its offensive threats, and here's where he's a big threat. In the pick and roll game, which Villanova likes to do a lot, he's their second most frequent use in pick and roll, and he's their most effective ahead of Colin Gillespie. So that takes a big chunk of their wow. offense out of the way, and it takes away their best defensive guy, their best individual defender, is Justin Moore going against a team in Kansas that has multiple guys that can hurt you offensively. I think this is a massive loss here. I, I do like Kansas. They're playing better defense. I think they can get out in transition. And here's the other thing. The last thing on Kansas, and I'll let you go, Dave. Abaji, Ochai Abaji, who's a National Player of the Year candidate, Big 12 Player of the Year, really hasn't kicked it in yet in the NCAA tournament. I mean, first yeah. team All-American and has not carried them. This is a great job by Bill Self and Remy Martin, the transfer from Arizona State, who has not fit well with this Kansas system all year. He was injured, which, which took away some of his playing time, but he just couldn't fit in this system. There's been some frustration mm. on both sides, but here's where I credit Bill Self. He did not just discard Remy Martin, kept Martin engaged enough that as he got healthy, Martin has been the guy that's been carrying him here in the NCAA tournament. So Remy Martin is now playing and you haven't had a Baji get going yet. He is due for a game. I like Kansas here. The point spread makes me a little bit queasy, but I like Kansas for all of those reasons in this man, one. Man, man, I think you just talked me in the lane of points. I think you talked me right into laying the points. I just, so we were both old enough to remember Villanova winning this thing with Raleigh Massimino sure. and the magical two games that they had and that last one against Georgetown home would never forget because they kept making shots when they had every reason to, to not, and they had injuries and they had, I mean, I think they played five guys too. Like it was just one of those things. Does it take that special effort in your mind from Villanova to not only win this game, but win the whole thing? I don't think they can do it twice. I really don't. It would be amazing if they did. They can do it once. I think this, they, with this injury, they got a, their road. The hill may be too high to climb. It may it may be too much to ask. I, I, just looking at it from that standpoint, and now you tell me that Kansas is playing better defense and their best player hasn't been their best player this whole tournament in March. Like, everything is leading up to laying the points with the favorite. That's at least That's what I'm thinking. The total. The total is so low, 133. I think this plays to the under again. I don't know. I mean, if, if, if whether either team wins, I don't think it matters. I'm leaning under again. Call me crazy. Call me, um, you know, boring. Call me repetitive. It looks like the same game, does it not? Yeah, I, th I think you have to go that way. And, and listen, Kansas is totally comfortable playing the game in the 50s if you want. Remember what league they're coming out of in the Big 12. So they yeah. can get down in the muck and absolutely muck this thing up and make yeah. it look ugly in the 50s. So that's a comfort zone for them. They want to get out and run, and they want to find some easy baskets. But the, uh, as I said, their defense is picking up. I, I just like Kansas. There's a lot of reasons. I didn't even get into the bigs with McCormick and Lightfoot inside against a Villanova team that only goes as big as 6'7 or 6'8. So – to me, this is, yes, it's some of the injury because I think more than just the mental impact of losing one of your best players, what I just said about Moore's impact on the court, I think is big. And I just think Kansas is playing really well. I think they've got a lot of different pieces. We mentioned Martin can carry them if need be. If Abaji comes back, he's there. That puts Brown as a third option. I mean, that's a hell of a third option there, Dave, when it's Brown as your guy. I, I just like Kansas. I know, I know a lot of narratives are saying, well, coaching advantage to Jay Wright. I mean, my man Bill Self's still a Hall of Famer. There might yeah. be a coaching advantage. I mean, it's not like it's Bill Self that doesn't know what he's doing here. I, I think they're just – I like Kansas. Again, maybe I have some bias because I watch them every week throughout the year. 
but give me Kansas here in game one. And I default to under first because I think Kansas can play either way you need them to. Before we move on to the next game, I wanted to ask you, what is it like for the teams now that they've gotten to the final four, like this whole week, like, with the practices and the shoot arounds or, or, or I mean, there's people there you're at the final four. I don't think, I mean, you got the four blue, four blue bloods, like with teams that have all been there maybe not Hubert Davis, but as a player, he was not as a coach. Okay. Um, nobody's overwhelmed by this stuff as far as the coaches and the, and the schools, how big is this for the kids? Yeah, it's it, just a great experience. Uh, I went to one in 2010 with West Virginia, one of the great events, one of the absolute great sporting events around. I think one of the things you have to think about, though, there is a feeling, or at least it felt like there was around our West Virginia team of, ah, we made the, the final four <laughs> itself is such a big deal. And we talk so much about it's not less about national championships than final fours, but what do you hear so often? been to how many final fours, been to how many final fours, been yeah. to how many, getting to the final four is a big thing. And I think you have to guard against the exhale of, ah, oh, we made it. And now you got to go win some games. I think to your point though, these are four programs that aren't going to exhale because they've made it to the final four. This is right. four programs that expect to win national championships, even North Carolina that comes in as an eight seed. So you've got a really young Duke team. I mean, we talked about this, one of the youngest teams that was left in the sweet 16 in Duke but it's all guys that are used to playing in big moments in these big situations. So I think this is one of those final fours where there's no, just we're happy to be here. This is four programs that expect and understand how to go win a national title. It's always a letdown Monday, as far as the betting handle and all this stuff. Saturday is such a, like a fun day in the book. And then it rolls to Monday and like college basketball fans, like, Oh, the game, the game, the game. And then it's like, it's Monday. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's just, it's such a, Ugh, let down like you said the the exhale is saturday and and that's true live dave if you're at a final four the the best days are the thursday and friday leading into the game saturday and yeah. then the game saturday it's that festive carnival atmosphere that goes on yeah. and then so much clears out i mean sunday you're kind of walking around the streets going <laughs> is there wait we still <laughs> there's still a game and by the way it's for the natty <laughs> It's for a now. Where would everybody go? Merchandise is slashed at 75% off. By right. the way, tip, pro tip, if you're going to the Final Four and you see all that nice gear, try not to pull the trigger because Sunday or Saturday after the games, that stuff gets slashed. You can go in and load up. I know you're a gear guy. If you ever find yourself at the Final Four, okay. Sunday's your buying opportunity when they need to get rid of it. Just a little pro tip right there. That's a, maybe the best tip we give anybody today on, <laughs> on this show. <laughs> That's better than the betting advice we're giving <laughs> Right, out. exactly. Um, so what? give me the second game look. I mean, North Carolina, yeah. all right, I, I wore the hat. It's the only hat I got left, but I don't have it right near me now. Um, the four-point dogs against Duke, who, by the way, Coach K, last game, last run, every, every game could be his last game, made it to the Final Four. They're certainly not going to lose in the, in the semifinals for the national championship, right? It's only four point spread. This is a, this is a good one. This is another fun one. I, I'm excited about this. Listen, I, I think if you're if you're a fan of the NCAA tournament, this played out kind of exactly as you like it. My St. Peter's Peacocks gave you great stories in those early rounds and advanced yep. on, but now those upsets have kind of given away, and we've got we've got some premier programs here. Again, I know Carolina's an eight seed, but it's Carolina coming in here. This one's fun. Now, this one is one we're going to have to get in and debate the over under here because the the under trend might be in jeopardy. This is two really, really strong offenses. This is elite offensive basketball teams and very average defensive teams here. So we're going to come back to the total. Let me give you some numbers first on this and let's see where we can lead into a side. Carolina obviously playing its best basketball of the season. This is a different Carolina team than you saw all season. Here's some numbers to back that up. Four of Carolina's top seven most efficient offensive games have come in the last four games. Four of wow. their top seven, all in the tournament. They are clicking offensively. But here's something to watch. This is a very average Carolina defensive team, but three of its top seven most efficient defensive performances 
have come in the NCAA tournament. Ooh, I so like Carolina's that. not only scoring, they're guarding you as well. Uh-huh. That might be kind of remember that stat here as we go through, because Duke's thing is Duke is a lead offensively, man. I mean, they got, they got guys all the way through. Williams in the middle is the one that's really coming on. We know about Bancaro. We know about mm-hmm. Wendell Moore. Williams has looked like a, not only a lottery pick. I mean, you put him in the top five. Seven footer can run the floor. He has looked very good. I gave you the stat last week and it played out. Duke is top 11 nationally in two point field goal percentage. So that's something they want to do. Mm-hmm. They're going against a Carolina defense that, again, playing very well defensively, but hasn't all year. Watch this part of the Duke offense if you want a Duke positive. Mentioned last week against Texas Tech, this was a strength on strength. Duke is in the 100th percentile offensively in cuts to the basket. So they like that motion. Tell, they like Tell the, the people the again, basket. the what percentage? 100th percentile. They're the best. They're the best. They're the best. Texas Tech was very good at stopping that. They didn't, right? They did Duke not. got the win. Yes. Carolina is 14th percentile nationally defensively against cuts. Big oh advantage for Duke. Big oh advantage. So you slice got a good dice right you there. You got a team that's going to slice you. You got a team that's very good from two. I like Duke offensively a lot. I do like the revenge angle. I know that's oh hard boy. to handicap it. And you've got yep. some confidence from Carolina. Are you kidding me? After that that post game handshake, everybody's <laughs> mad at Huber Davis. He didn't look at anybody. I mean, Duke's looked away when they were shaking hands. I I think I'm Duke here, and and I'll be honest. I've already played. I've already played Kansas Duke money line parlay. I'm not messing with the spreads. Just give me Duke and Kansas to advance here. Thoughts Kansas, from you? Kansas Duke money line parlay is actually that that got you plus money. That's that you're not laying juice on that. You're actually yeah, no. that's that's yeah. a two game money line parlay that will get you more than your uh, than your risk is. So that's not a bad that's not a bad bet. That's a little you know gives you action the whole day Saturday. Um, my thoughts are this: North Carolina went into Duke in Cameron in Coach K's last game there, and they made that big ceremony. They, all those guys came back. ESPN was there all day. We got caught up in it. I mean, we recorded that game to come home and watch later because we were going out. And Jess, my wife, said, record that game. I want to watch it later. And I was like, you want to watch a college basketball game? She's like, well, yeah, you've been watching it all day. And it got caught. She got caught up in it. She's like, I want to see it. And then we came home and watched the first half. And she's like, man, this is bad. And I'm like, oh, it gets worse. And she said, well, I don't really want to watch anymore. Then they get to play each other again after that. Duke's going to lose. I mean, it's going to be. I, I, I. I I think uh, I don't really bet narratives. I mean, I'm always about the numbers and about the teams and about the on the floor stuff. I think Duke's going to win. I think Duke's going to win. I just, I want to say that North Carolina is going to play the, play the heel. Pardon the pun. The tar heel. Good wrestling term. Yeah. This would be a perfect heel uh, play. And if you like the heels, you probably should take them on the money line. I don't think the points are going to matter. Duke wins and covers or North Carolina wins the game. I think bad guys, I mean, the value is definitely on the, on the North Carolina Tar Heels. There's mm-hmm. no question. Um, they could win this basketball game. No mm-hmm. question. They might. Game's going over. Game's going over. I think... I think if either team wins, I don't think the to- I think the total. I mean, it's one fifty one. It opened one forty nine and a half. I think one fifty one is a good number, but I think this plays into the one fifties like easy. I don't think you got to worry about it. Winning scores, it's, it, they're in the seventies, both teams. So that's still not enough, but it's depending on. I mean, I don't even think free throws. Nothing matters, right? Like, I, I do you? How I know I'm an under guy. Do you see this total playing out a certain way when you look at this game? Well, just initially, what I just said. Every every metric you go to is favors the offenses here. Other than Carolina's just playing good defense the last three games. I don't know how you don't go over 
except man, that under trend just scares the the dickens out of me yeah. in a big in a big building, right? In a big moment with a couple of young teams, in particular Duke being very young. So I, I think I could argue, much like you get to the final four, Dave, I could argue either team in yes. either game and yes. probably over or under in yes. this. So I think we can make cases. Here's one thing that concerns me about the over, although I think if I'm if I'm playing the total, I'm playing over. I'm just I'm just gonna play it and we may not win it, but that's the side I would play. But here's one thing that concerns me. Duke is below its average free throw rate. I'm sorry. Duke is above its average free throw rate in three of its four tournament games, meaning it's getting to the line more than it normally does in the tournament. Mm. Cue those, uh, cue the conspiracy theorists that think Coach K is getting some help in his final <laughs> run here. But Duke's getting to the line a little bit more. They're playing a Carolina team that is seventh nationally in defensive free throw rate, meaning they don't put teams on the line. Now some of that's because oh. they're not guarding. Some of that's because they're not guarding, <laughs> so they're not fouling yet. So you're getting baskets, you're just not getting free throws. Some of that I, I get it. But when we want overs, what do we want? We want teams going to the line, getting those easy points for without us. That's a clock move. Yeah. I, without the clock, I don't know that Duke gets that in this game, or at least the numbers tell you it won't. But all that to say, I side with you. If I'm picking one, if you're if you're making me play a total, I'm taking the over. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean. You're right. Like you can talk about this stuff uh, till you're blue in the face and you can make a case for both sides, uh, both totals. It's one of those things. Do you, do the kids get more practice time in this building than they even get um, in, in the previous rounds? Like they're there now, right? Do they practice? Yeah, oh. you get, no, you get like an, you get like an open shootout, an open shoot, open gym shoot around but it's really more for the public so no you're going to go in fairly cold in these buildings you get one day to shoot around in there and it's tough and that's the challenge so uh, when you're so looking first at, half unders again I, I mean there's a reason those those play i mean that's that's the scary thing with duke and carolina two teams that are built on making shots right that's what that's what duke does i mean listen one of the other keys to this game Duke will bury you if you leave them open on jump shots, which isn't yes. always true for college teams. You can leave a lot of college teams open and they're still not going to hit shots. Duke buries you and Carolina leaves you open a bunch on jump shots. 50% mm. of the time on catch and shoots, Carolina's leaving them on guarded. Now, this is simply, uh, listen, this isn't- 50% uh, of the time on catch and shoots. I love when you just go right full on basketball terms. It's so, it's I just music to my ears. Go ahead, continue. I just had to bring that. Well, up. I was just going to say, I mean, that would tell me that a good shooting team in Duke is going to get some open looks. In a normal situation, Duke buries those. Advantage Duke. But now you're in a giant cavernous arena in a big moment with young guys. So the handicap says Duke and over here. But uh, those guys may show up and miss shots. This is it, – it's mm. one of those the, – the easiest thing in basketball to say, and everybody giggles and laughs when you say it, what's the key to the game? Got to make shots. I go just say that all the time. Got to make shots. Well, no, no kidding. You got to make shots. But that really Thanks. comes into play in this one. Shots are going to be there. Can you make shots? That's what it comes down to. So I think we'll know. Dare I say we'll know early whether the shots are dropping for certain guys, and we'll. I think we'll see the pace. I don't know if you paid attention to the in game. It has been so volatile in college, like. The numbers move fast. Like we, you know, and we, we did the shows for a year, a game within the game. And, you know, these shows on eight in the box, and we've talked about the end game and an in-game show that would be with the three of us. would be fantastic. We may talk about doing that. We've been talking. We may actually set it up. Anyhow, total is going to close 151, 152. If they're making shots early, it's going to go up to 158 quick, like quick. If they're missing shots, this thing's going to go down to 141 quick, you know, um, might be opportunity there to jump in because it might start slow, but if it starts fast, this thing's going to run. And I don't think, you know, last, before we move on, North Carolina doesn't have any real major advantage inside, right? Like this, this two point thing, this is Duke's advantage inside. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Duke, I mean, Duke's so, so elite. Duke has the advantage inside. Duke's elite offensively. They make shots when you leave them open. And they got Coach K coaching in a revenge spot 
against Hubert Davis, who came in and ruined the party in Cameron. Okay. I don't know if four is enough. I, I think it's Duke, but I mean, but listen now here, uh, not to, not to throw you off on your, on your Duke, if I've already got you around to Duke, which is where I said, but my, my guy Armando, and I'm going to say his name wrong, Baycott, Bacot, what, what's he averaging 15 and 15, like the only guy ever to do that in the tournament, six ten center. So he's a dude inside for Carolina. And then Brady Manick, the Oklahoma transfer is, is such a key. He's played a lot of basketball and that's been one of the key transfer portal pickups this year has been Brady Manick. So it's not like Carolina doesn't come at you with dudes as well. And they're playing really well. So I, I could take either side. You could talk me into it. I just think given everything we just laid out, style of play, revenge angle, all of it, I, I'm going to ride Duke to win it. I'm staying away from the spread on both sides. Give me a Kansas and Duke to advance on to Monday night. I had North Carolina in that last game at Cameron Indoor. That was one of the best bets I made in a while. I mean, and I talked about it all. I said, this is no way. They, this is way too many points. May have under, maybe have over adjusted a little bit here with this one. This one probably should be maybe five and a half, five, which tells me, I mean, the, the odds makers think North Carolina's live. There's no question about that. Futures to win the tournament. The books have some exposure on Duke. So they don't want to give away too big of a number on North Carolina. It's an interesting dynamic, uh, a fun watch. I can't wait. Newbie, you saw this team in person. You saw the fans. You saw all of it. Those uniforms are pretty sweet in person, too, I must. I, I, I bet. Is North Carolina going to win this game at Duke? I don't know if they're going to win it, but I was saying on the cash considerations podcast, even this is, this is a team that is just vastly under seated and that really helped them out getting them to this point. I think they have plenty of motivation coming into this game. I, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the most negative EV thing you can do. Like he <laughs> house says bet and have fun doing it. Uh, I I'm going to do the same money line parlay and then I'm going to hope for close games both ways tease both of them up with the four and a half points. So Villanova plus nine Duke or, or excuse me, UNC plus nine hope for a nice little middle uh, nine point game, both ways cash all four of the tickets. That's the way I'm going Dave. B how this guy here produces the show. He sits and listens. He gives us the cues and all this stuff. You know what else he does? He takes notes. He's leading the cash considerations podcast bracket pool. There you go. He's been leading since day one, even with his champ Kentucky knocked out. And he hasn't watched no games other than the game in person. His his testimony is so simple. Listen to eight in the box. I've been saying, Ooh, guys, anybody who's, anybody who's asked me how, they're like, how the hell are you in first place? I say, eight in the box, man. If, if you're not listening, I don't know what the hell you're doing because I haven't watched – before the tournament, a second of college basketball, I just sit here taking notes from the shit you guys say, <laughs> and i just been cashing like crazy. So if I win I love thing, it. oh, man, eight, eight in the box is the biggest testimonial ever. It's Let's unbelievable. Go. He says that yesterday on a cash consideration show, which you get, you should go listen to that because it's a different kind of look at stuff, but it's also kind of, you know, global and like, well, the big industry term right now is evergreen. You know, Dave, you guys do evergreen content. Yes. We're very, we have green thumbs. Yeah, we were very aware of that. Thank you very much for listening and watching the shows uh, both here and, you know, wherever you listen to them. But there you go, Bihal. I mean, we got a guy, you know, on it who's listening, kind of taking the information, doing it. Listen, we're not telling you who to play, telling you what we think, and we're giving you different reasons. You guys do it. But, again, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching on, on the YouTube, commenting. Got a couple of those views to pop last week. We really appreciate that. How are you going to be watching the games on Saturday? Yes. Are uh, you? I mean, are you kidding me? Am I watching? Yeah, yes. we're, we're watching. I'm trying to figure out exactly where I'm watching. At this point, I almost want to fly to West Virginia. We can watch them together. We might have to, <laughs> we might have to set something up. I don't know. Um, it's fun watching the games in the sports books, but you don't always get to watch the games. You know what I mean? Like there's just there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of other things. And in a book, you got them on a main TV, but like you go to a place like Circa, there's, there's a hundred screens and it's just, you get distracted, people walking and all this other stuff. I'm, I, I'm excited to watch the games. So I just want to just see if you're watching the games and I can maybe use that as an excuse. Hey, Brad's watching the games. I got to be on the phone with Brad the whole now, time. I will say this, go ahead and just give me Kansas to win it all. I'm going to go ahead and push ahead to Monday. Give me Kansas. 11 
11 no of matter your last, who they play? 11 of your last 14 national champions have been one seeds. Just FYI, there's a little number for you. I like Kansas. I think the defense is the edge here. Give me Kansas. Kansas is going to be the the, the the dark knight, the evil villain that takes down Duke and Coach K leaves in tears of sadness instead of tears of joy cutting, cutting down the nets. Let's go. Really? Rock, rock chalk. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. Rock um, chalk. Who's favored? Say, say chalk chalk wins. Kansas wins. Duke wins. What's the line? Kansas has to be favored, right? One. Close. I mean, basically, it's pick them. What would I you would make? You're so. the numbers guy. You tell me. Would, you make numbers. I would think so. I would think Kansas is a, is a slight favorite, but then, you know, you just get inundated with Duke money. If Duke wins impressively, Duke could be minus one or minus yeah. two, right? Uh, well, yeah. You know, would, Kansas yeah, wins a close me. game, doesn't cover, whatever. It's, you know, um, yep, 100% you if Villanova wins – I think that's the most surprising result of Saturday, right? If Villanova wins a basketball game. Yes. No. Yeah. I agree. Like? Yes. Okay. No, I agree. I agree. I, I thought you froze. Pardon me. No, nope, didn't freeze. We, we have technology issues sometimes and things like that. And when, and when you st stood there for a second, I was like, oh, no, please don't tell no. me. He's gone. Don't be gone. He's here. All right. What did you want to do next after after the basketball games? I well, think we'll do, we'll do some more baseball next week because we'll be one day away from, from, um, Opening, opening day. day yeah which i am just can't wait for baseball to get going i i would like to get involved you, i was you you've been watching the spring training games and i know you have because we spoke yesterday and you pointed out the mismatch colors uh working for seattle for robbie ray had the had the teal glove but these baby blue unis i just want to point out that first of all what Major League Baseball is doing with the spring training stuff is amazing because now I'm seriously going to have to get a separate house or some sort of storage unit for all of the stuff that I may end up with. The uniforms and stuff have been great. Are you watching spring training games for more than the uniforms? Because I, at this point, am not. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm because trying. you got to <clears throat> I I gotta transition out here. I got to transition out here and just start to get a feel for – for different teams. And you mentioned, I mean, Robbie Ray, that was distracting to me. Robbie Ray had the teal because he's on the Mariners now. That yeah. was an off season move there. That's, that's interesting. Helps the Mariners, which let's start there. Let's start there. Never mind the distracting glove by Robbie Ray. I don't know where the light blue spring training jerseys came from, from the Mariners, but I like yeah. them, but not with the teal glove. we got to get some uh, synergy back with that, with Robbie Definitely. Ray. That'll look great when the regular season starts and that teal logo comes back in with the Navy blue or the white. I'm yeah. all on board. Seattle's getting a lot of love here. Yes, Seattle's getting a lot of love. Are you liking the Mariners there out West? Um, I got to see how the rotation is going to line up in full, but don't forget the Mariners won all those games last year. Right. But um, a, a good friend of mine who's in the business is a writer named Mike Seeley. Um, he wrote a couple stories and we talked specifically about the Mariners last year them playing above their numbers baseball is a numbers sport oh, oh my goodness and like <laughs> i know you like it look oh. at you you laugh and like oh, 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 oh there's a lot of numbers you can there get is. deep in the weeds in like you like to say and um the mariners defied all of them so now you get this next year and the season wins is a fun bet. If you guys don't know or don't listen, like you can bet whether a team is going to win over or under a number of games. Seattle's is what, 83 and a half right now? 84 and a half? Up. Yeah. Yeah. So somewhere around there. Um, I don't know yet if I'm ready to just punch their ticket to being a, a mid 80s team. I got to see the staff. It's going to be pitching that's going to do it. I don't know. I just don't know other than. Houston, who else is good in that division? That's where we got to go. Yeah, so that's what I was going to ask you. So if you don't like them over their win total, you, you're not biting on the uh, plus 450 to win the division. Um, Angels are plus 400. I'm on DraftKings right now, by the yeah. way. That's just the DraftKings number. Okay. Plus 400 for the Angels, plus 450 for the Mariners, and obviously you got the Astros at the minus number, minus 175. Wouldn't nibble on that? I don't think so. I, I think the Astros just – over the course, these division, 
numbers are, are incredible because I used to have guys that would fly to Vegas just to bet those because they were like the value you're getting on Houston because they're that much better than the rest of the teams. Perception wise, you're like, you're going to come here to lay 175. Well, I am if you're going to give me 10,000, you know, so they would lay 17.5 to win 10,000 and have action on something that they felt like was mispriced at the beginning. So when I see that and I go, okay, now who, who else could beat them? I don't think anybody could beat Houston all over the course of the season. Um, How about jump over? Okay. Jump over to the American league for a second. Cause this American league East is going to be fun to watch. Oh, how do you handicap the East? My Toronto blue Jays with my guy from West Virginia, Alec Manoa, who had a breakout, rookie season last year he wasn't there all year but he really came on so yes. you lose Robbie Ray yes but you pick up Guzman from San Francisco you yep. got Mc Manoa rolling forward the Blue Jays are stacked plus 170 to win the East but man Yankees got a staff what about the Rays you want any part <laughs> of the Rays at 89 and a half are they are they undervalued because they may be the third <laughs> team in the East what's the American League East doing here so in, in trading our texts and stuff to prepare for the show, which, you know, we, we clearly prepare for the show. He told me, look at season wins. And I, first thing I did was AL East. And I went right to the Baltimore Orioles. Ooh. And I said, <laughs> I said 60, 61 and a half. <clears throat> They're going to lose a hundred games. They're going to lose a hundred games. There's no when Cause the rest of the division, see, this is where everyone's looking you know, left, I'm looking right. I'm looking at the worst teams and going, I mean, it's nighttime in Pittsburgh behind me every day, but I've been staring at these pirates lose and lose and lose and lose. And I used to sit in the book and take bets on them under, under, under. The Orioles have no shot in that division. None. The division is going to be decided by who does best against the Orioles. They're going to beat each other up. But if you go, if you play the Orioles 18 and 19 times, whatever that division is, 17 and two, like the Yankees are going 17 and two. The Rays will go 16 and three. The, the Blue Jays may sweep them. I mean, they may beat them twice. The whole battle of the birds, there's no battle. All right. Season wins under for the Orioles. I like. I can't tell you who's going to win that division right now. Are you kidding me? That is a, that's, a, we didn't even mention the Red Sox. Sorry, CH, right. but you know, whether you listen to the show, the Red Sox made the playoffs. Baseball's going to be different this year because, I mean, they let half the league in the playoffs now. So there's going to be a different kind of tier finish, whatever, towards the end. Once your spot is taken, like a lot of these season wins, the numbers are pretty good. The odds makers have, have the thing down pretty good. There's 30 teams. There's going to be, you know, I don't know, six to eight misses. Where, you know, like you got the Giants last year, they came out 72 and a half. They won 104 games. Nobody knew that. Nobody saw that coming. You missed. If half of these things come down to the last week of the season. How much variance can you have on 85 and a half? Team wins 90 games or, you know, 88, or they win, you know, 83 or they're barely 500 and it falls 81, 81. It's the hard part about these season wins, Bihau. But do you like a team in the AL East? Like looking at it right now, I think it. I mean, uh, Toronto has the best lineup. I love, 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 love that lineup. For me, it's the bridge to the bullpen to to the end. Starters look great. Second year is always the toughest year, um, you know. So we'll see how that goes for Manoa. But I mean, the yeah. kid is just a big, strong throwing kid, and he can pitch. Doesn't just throw; he can pitch. He's got nasty stuff, man. Seven, eight, nine. We need to get six, seven and eight, the bridge to the closer. Um, I, that's the question for me. And, again, I'm going to do all the pitching work this week on the baseball now that we've got to the Final Four and can breathe a little bit. And, you know, I'm watching the basketball in the NBA and just betting against the Lakers every single day. So that that's worked out well. But, uh, you know, there are only seven games left, and right now they're not in the playoffs. So, Baseball work begins for real, real this week. All right. But if I was putting you on the spot for one, you still like, you like the under 62 and a half? Yeah. Go to 62 and a half? Really? Ooh. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I like that. I mean, that gives you action. You know, we had the guy in West Virginia, a friend of yours, that bet against the Pirates every day. 
last every year, day. right? Yeah, every game. And against the Pirates, every game. And he he made money, but man, made he money. had a couple. He had a couple stretches there where he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. When yeah. they win four or five in a row, it's a bad week. Yeah. Early and late, right? Early, early <laughs> they won a few, and then late they won a few. You're you're right on that. I like these season win totals. It's fun to have action all year, but I just I was not very good at it last year. That was not profitable for me. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I don't I may not be. I may take your I may take your Orioles one there just so we have it from the show perspective, but I probably won't do a lot, although I really I really like them. I really like those plays. There's a contest at the Westgate. If you're interested, we'll discuss it uh, off the air. But um, it's a season wins contest, and you just you pay an entry fee. You pick every season win, and they pay the top three spots. Now, you know, that's a fun exercise. We did it last year on Cash Considerations. We picked the divisions and stuff. And um, our baseball expert, who, by the way, is also our producer of the show, who doesn't really watch baseball that much because he's, you know, still in his 20s and it's tough to watch a whole game and all the other things that you hear. He picked like every division right. He His variance was unbelievable. And, I, you know, we talked about on the Cash Considerations podcast. Newbie, do you remember that? Or, or no? Oh, of course I remember that because I was, I was as shocked as anybody. When we were picking them, I didn't even know. Dave was like, who are you like in the AL East? And I was like, who's in the AL East? So I, I, had, I, had to, I was pulling up on Google, just looking at what teams I liked the best. And it was a really, you know, great formula. I was working with Brad Howe, but I think I got what – Everybody but two division winners, and, think, and it was a it was a beautiful thing. And yeah. I I look to repeat my excellence again. You got five out of the six divisions. It was it was like I was like I, I've been reading guides. I've been looking at spring training tapes and games. I'm watching pictures. Kid comes on and nails five out of six. Who, who would know the best way to prepare for baseball is just watch lacrosse? Who who would have <laughs> known? I, I, I just learned that. <laughs> he's watching lacrosse now he's coaching lacrosse and all this other stuff yeah so we'll have that preview on on, on cash considerations we're going to do our baseball preview um how about the national league be how i don't even know why we're going to play a season because the dodgers are just going to win 100 and, i don't know 114 games um blow everybody out just bet the overs i mean like i don't know freddie freeman went inside there I have no idea. I mean, Albert Albert left the Dodgers, and he's going to finish out his career with the Cardinals. Cardinals may be good. The NL East looks interesting, but you trust the Mets. You got to trust the Mets with that staff. Hell no, are you nuts? <laughs> are you, it's the Mets. Uh, until they prove it otherwise, they're still the Mets. I love, 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 love Jacob Degrom. Watching him pitch is is watching, again, one of those generational talents to me. You got to extend him out, though. Like, you got to throw past the fifth inning. I mean, it can't be that easy where you just, you know, you go five, you get 10 Ks, and they're good. Like, And you okay. got to help him. Can they get some runs for him this year? This is I mean, problem. how many times last year was he just holding people to one and not getting any run support? This is the problem. They, their lineup doesn't hit. Now, it's going to be interesting to me. I mean, again, thinking from a global perspective, the, the dynamics of the National League is going to change because we've got a DH in there now. So all them automatic outs or those easy innings when you've got eight, nine, one coming up are gone. So um, I think we have to we have to look at the impact of that, which again I will the this week and try to figure out who has the DH help already and who's going to have to really find a DH where, where they didn't maybe weren't prepared. I mean, look, team, look at the Phillies. I called the Phillies the best softball team in baseball. I mean, they got guys, they're just going to come up with smack, smack bombs. And did I say smack? I didn't mean to say smack. I was trying my best all week to not say smack after, after Chris there. Rock. Yeah. That's right. um, but the Phillies are going to hit bombs. They're going to, they're, they're going to score runs. They cannot catch the ball. Um, my buddy Norm, who listens to the shows and stuff, he he says they're butchers. He said they're just they they they, they, they got all they don't even need gloves. They can't catch the ball, and I'm like, uh, overs. Okay, maybe we'll bet overs. And then they got the bullpen. That's scary. So there's all kind of things we'll be talking about it, and you know, hopefully, uh, one day, you know what we should do? We should get an RV and do a ballpark tour and document it. And. We got to call Phil Burnett Camping Center. 
We got, Check it out, Burnett should, Camping Center. We have to call Phil and talk about that. Google that. Check him out. Do you Real drive? Quick, last... Will you drive? Nah, I don't want. I don't, I'm with you. I, I would. We got to drive. drive around with it. Nubi, do you drive? I'm not I'll driving. Drive. I'll drive. If I get to hang out with you guys, I'm down. I'll drive. <laughs> I'll buy the food. I'll cook. The, put the smoker in the back. Forget about it, boys. We'll, we'll that's, buy that's the food here. and he'll cook it. Well, that, that's what I was going to say here. The problem is Nubi is too valuable. He needs to cook and drive. <laughs> you and I aren't doing anything but talking. We're I'll bringing bring nothing to the table, but talking. I got a brother. I'll bring a sous chef. We'll get. We'll, we'll figure it out. He's, Newbie's he's got, got more product. skills. <laughs> Newbie's got the skills we don't. Well, it's, listen, this is why <laughs> these kids all around all the time. Got the info though. <laughs> you got me in first place in the cash considerations bracket. He's got. He's can close the show. He can close the show. All right. Speaking of closing the show, I'm going to do this. Um, last statement. Taught. We know we talk about numbers and stuff. Before the tournament, some books had a bet. <clears throat> Add up the total number of seeds left in the final four, and would you bet over or under? The number was 10 and a half. 10 and a half. I fall for it every, week, every year. I bet under every single year. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's got to be good. Be how add up the numbers, the seed numbers of all the teams. Kansas is a one. That's easy. Um. Villanova, or as some say in the Northeast, Villanova. So yep. that would be a, t- a two. That's a two. Right? Duke's a two. Duke's a two. That's five. One, two, and two is five. What's, what's Carolina, North Carolina? Eight. Eight. Eight they and five your 13. Bet. They blew you up. Over. Again. Blew you up. It was ten and a half, and it got me because it was plus money under. I was like, oh, yeah. It's just, it, this is the year, the chalk. All season, we talked about how wide open this was. And then you go fill out a bracket, and you get three ones and a two, or two twos and two ones, and you go, oh, yeah, this is going to be easy. Nothing is easy. Nothing at all is easy. <sighs> Who's your national champ? Tell me again. Kansas. Kansas. I'm just going to ride the, ride the Jayhawks. All right. Who you got? You going Duke? Are you going the Coach K narrative? You're going Duke. Ridiculous. You're about to say Duke. Newbie, he's about to say Duke. It pains me. It pains me to do it. I'm going to say Duke. I'm going to say Duke. Although I think that Kansas is going to win. So Duke, Kansas, and then we'll have something to talk about again next week on the show. Newbie, who's your champ? Uh, I – if UNC wins, they're winning it all. I think they're live to win the game, so I'll be the lone detractor. I saw them in person. Give me, that, give me the the Carolina blue. I'm going with the Tar Heels. I agree with that. I think if North Carolina wins, they're beating Kansas. I agree with you. I, I, that that that's good. All right. So we just, so we have a pick for three of the four, which guarantees Villanova's the national champion. Congratulations! <laughs> that's what I was Alabama. hoping for that was what I was hoping for. Go no. Congratulations, Jay Wright wins again. Thank you. It's unbelievable. All right. That's going to do it for the show for the boys. He's Dan Alexander. We call him at newbie talks on the Twitter for Brad. Howe, he's at Brad how zero seven on the Twitter and myself, Dave Sharapan at sports BK can sing. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching eight in the box. Enjoy final four weekend. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you.